I will certainly do my very best to tell you how much fun it is to work in uh, organizations and corporate learning. And I'm going to do that by starting with a story about workplace learning. It's a story of when very smart people struggled to learn and adapt to change and how we help them through their journey. And it all began with this, a white little mouse, curious enough. You'd say, kind of cute, with a nice long tail. We all know the mouse, it's a friend. But to the physicians of North Shore University Health System, this little mouse didn't look like a friend. It looked like foe. Now, why is that? Well, the leaders of the healthcare system said with great excitement, we are going to transform healthcare. We are going to implement a fully electronic medical record across our entire healthcare system. And we're going to be one of the first healthcare systems in the country to do this. In fact, there had been very few successful examples of healthcare systems making this transition from paper to paperless. In fact, there's one or two widely publicized examples of where they tried and failed. Why is that? The physicians rebelled. They rebelled because this was too much change. And for those physicians, if they didn't get them all in line and agreeing to make the transition, they were the backbone of the organization. It wasn't going to happen. But North Shore had a very big, audacious goal. This was going to transform the way we provide health care to you, our patients, and family members of patients. It was about all the right things. It was about drastically improving clinical quality. It was about patient safety. It's about better service to you. And certainly, it was also about something very important, managing costs, and even better protecting the privacy of your patient data. It was good stuff. No more physicians messed a handwriting to interpret. No more worries for clinicians about not having the information they needed to take care of you. All the information about you, both clinical and business, in one place. It was going to make things great for everyone involved, eventually. But something stood in the way. <laughs> A very intimidating, scary mouse. You say, mice, they're not scary, maybe to elephants, but they were scary to the physicians. A few of them, anyway, at North Shore University Health System. Why were they so scary? Well, actually, to a handful, it caused them to go running. A few to early retirement, a few to other healthcare systems that didn't have so many of these, and a few, quite frankly, far away from us, those that were driving the change, because this was all a lot to swallow. Now, most did not go running. Most uh, were, however, quite intimidated by this mouse, because it represented an obstacle, an obstacle to doing what they do well and do every day, taking care of patients. And in many cases, for those of us that have experienced it, saving lives. So this obstacle to care, why was it so tough? Who would think such a little thing could cause so much concern? Well, these were highly educated people. And you say, what's the problem? They're pretty bright. They've been through many years of schooling. In fact, if you think about a primary care physician, they have at least 11 years after secondary school, four years of med school, four years of university education, at least three up to eight years of extra training in hospitals. And surgeons have 16 years of post-secondary education. Very educated people. This wasn't about the lack of education or their intellect. This was about change and shaking up their world. Imagine this. It's almost like a snow globe. If you have all of your responsibilities in your day-to-day -day task and you shake up that snow globe, and all the pieces land somewhere different, this is what was happening to the life of a physician. It almost felt like being back in med school again. You had to look in a different place to find the way that you documented a diagnosis, the way you placed an order, the way you generally went about your day taking care of patients. It wasn't easy. And for physicians, they have less than seven minutes to establish rapport, to assess your clinical health and situation, to make a diagnosis, and then to recommend an action. That's not a lot of time. And if you're disoriented and, in fact, frustrated or even fearsome, it's pretty tough uh, and stressful circumstances. I want to share with you a sign. This is a sign that I actually keep in my office. And I keep it in front of me. If 
front and center to remind me to be both humble and curious. I recently switched jobs after 13 years working for this healthcare system, and I have to tell you, it has been a humbling experience. I thought that given that I stayed in the same profession and really was just switching to a different segment of the industry, that it wouldn't be so bad. I knew what I was doing. But I am reminded every day, and for those of us who are in the workforce, you know this, that every day with every new project, every new leader, every new colleague, every new stretch assignment, there's an opportunity to learn. Better said, it's really a requirement to learn. Things are getting increasingly complex. There's a great deal of change in our every day. In the business world, we're facing it constantly. I was at a meeting earlier today with other learning leaders in organizations, and that was what we were all talking about. How do we help support our employees in a constantly changing environment? Increasing complexity, increasing global nature of the work we do, increasing virtual nature. You've got to be flexible. You've got to have new ideas, and you've got to come with diverse experiences if you're going to survive in that world, and not just survive, succeed. Constant pace of change, constant need for all of us to keep learning. If you don't, you got to watch out for the trap. Because those that grab onto the mouse's tail and go along for the ride, they get to where they want to go, not only surviving, but, but succeeding and helping their organizations do the same thing. Those that don't, watch out. So here's my little mouse friend. I want to tell you about what happened when we took those 1,300 physicians and put them through training. Uh, we said to those physicians, you are required to attend training. In fact, it's going to be an average of 16 hours, up to 32 hours of training to learn this new software that goes with the electronic medical record. And we even said, we're going to have you take a competency assessment to prove to us that you're ready to use this system. No exceptions. Can you imagine the noise we heard from these physicians? Keep in mind, not all of them worked for us. Many of them just admitted in our hospitals. They were loud, and they made it clear they didn't like this idea. But it was a requirement, and we said to them, if you don't come along for the ride and hold on to this mouse's tail, you will not be able to admit patients in our hospitals. And frankly, you won't be able to, if you're employed by us, see patients in your doctor's offices. There was no exceptions. Now, some of these physicians were excited, and they said, I'm in. I can't wait to hear about this new, great utopia of what patient care will be like, and uh, went along for the ride. They came to training, though, because this was a new system, and in fact, the healthcare system was an early adopter, so we heard all kinds of reactions when they actually ended up in the training. One reaction was, who moved my stuff? I can't find my information. We, I'm an interventional radiologist. I don't see my protocols in here. I'm a pediatric, a pediatric physician. I don't see my information here. So it was frustration. This was a new system. It wasn't fully built. We were an alpha or a beta on many elements of this system. Frustration. Some of them says, this is not how I work. You've reorganized things. But then were those physicians that said, Ooh, cool, look what this can do. What else can this mouse do for me? And those were the ones who embraced this with curiosity, excitement, and frankly helped the others come along for the ride. This was tough. Physicians, frankly, were in a tough situation to begin with, and this was going to make life even tougher. If you think about the life of a physician, already pressure from medical malpractice looming over their head, potential lawsuits, they have productivity goals. So these were already seemingly impossible to meet. And frankly, the regulatory agencies constant scrutiny over their work. It wasn't easy. And guess what? This thing made it a whole lot harder. We required the training. We got them to training. But boy, in addition to their reactions, they also had very diverse levels of experience. There were some physicians who had really either low or no computer skills. And I'm going to tell you, this is a true story. One of the physicians came to training, took the mouse, pointed it at the monitor, and started waving it around. <laughs> they thought it worked like a laser pointer they had used in Grand Rounds. There was another story, not one of our physicians, but still very true, where they took the mouse, put it on the ground, 
and thought it worked like a sewing machine pedal. <laughs> but then, quite frankly, there was the other extreme, and this is where we have our friend over here. This represents the med students and residents. They lived in this world. This was their norm. The trainers and the mice could not move fast enough for them. So we had to run and keep, and to keep up. So it was tough. It was scary. They were fearful. They were frustrated. What were we going to do to make this situation better? Well, this was tough because we were one of the first healthcare systems in the country to make this transition. And what they wanted to know was not that we were going to give them good training with great trainers or that we were going to feed them and uh, design the training for their work, but no, they wanted to know what were we going to do at the other end of this journey to ensure that what was important to them was there, that they could provide good patient care best, better than they were today, and that, frankly, they could be more productive because they were tightly measured against these productivity goals. So think about the physicians. Their concerns are just like our concerns. If you are frustrated, if you have a new role in your organization or a new technology or software that you're up against, a new boss, it's tempting to flee. What's going to keep you going? Curiosity and the clear feeling that something is better at the end of the rainbow. So we had to do whatever we could to bring in that vision of the better, ideal, utopian future. And what we did, we found any physician that had been there and we brought them on down. There weren't a lot of them since this was such new software, but we had them come and have physicians talk to physicians. They gave testimonials, they gave demonstrations, and every time we brought a hospital up on this new electronic medical record, we had the other hospitals right behind them come and watch and see what was happening. We had them shadowing each other. We had them coaching each other. Whatever would help paint the picture that this was all going to be worth it in the end. We gave them many opportunities to practice, dress rehearsals, people at their elbow coaching them through. But most importantly, we said failure is not an option here because that's where the other healthcare systems struggled, physicians trying to weasel out. There was 100% commitment to making this happen, and every resource was put in place to ensure that indeed succeeded. So, mouse, friend or foe? Well, in the long run, though the reputation of that little mouse wasn't so great to begin with, mouse indeed became a very important friend because as the physicians and the rest of the healthcare system transitioned in this journey, they found that indeed they could do what they eventually really wanted to do, which is take better care of their patients. So physicians now at easy access to their fingertips will be able to pull up your lab results, pull up your x-rays, pull up your history from your physicals, hospital stays, and every experience that you've had within the healthcare system and know what they need to know to assess your situation and make a good diagnosis. Better patient care for the individual patient they could also look at their patients that had similar diagnoses and look in patterns and trends and change their clinical protocols based on what was working and what wasn't. And lastly, one of their ultimate fears and frustrations was also addressed. This electronic medical record hardwired into it best practices, regulatory requirements, and things that could get them in trouble. For example, alerts would fire if there was a potential interaction between meds. This was the promised land. It took a while to get there, but indeed, today, this is the norm in North Shore University Health System. And any, and I can't say any, but in most healthcare systems that have been brave enough to make this transition. Let me ask you, are any of you experienced in playing a role in this journey? Have you been patients or family members of patients who have uh, been part of this transformation and benefited from the medical record? Yeah. We now even have a patient portal where you can look at your own records, communicate with your physician, pay your bills. Um, aren't you glad they hung on for the ride? It's been a massive change, not an easy one. But thankfully, the physicians of North Shore University Health System, as well as all the employees, did indeed come along for the ride. And today, um, we're all having the benefits for it. So back to my first question. This mouse, is it friend or foe? Well, indeed, it's friend. 
And uh, curiosity may have killed the cat, but if the curious mouse is your friend, you have a whole world of opportunity of new learning and new exploration. Those that really grab onto the tail of this mouse, those are the ones that are going to succeed in this increasingly complex work environment that we're in and uh, are going to benefit for themselves as well as for their organizations. This is what we do in learning and development in organizations. We help employees learn and grow and adapt to change so that they can succeed for themselves in their career as well as for the organization. So be curious. Think about when you are faced with your next challenge, what's going to be your reaction? It's going to be tempting to run. And trust me, having just made that transition myself, I've been tempted. But choose to be curious. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That is the norm these days. Change is a constant, so the lifelong learning journey needs to be a constant as well. Ask yourself, when faced with a mouse, your own change, what else can I do with this? Thank you all. <laughs>